My next guest has been taking on the totalitarians for decades, in particular as it relates to border security. I believe he is the most knowledgeable person in our country when it comes to border-related issues. Michael Cutler has 30 years of experience with the former Immigration and Naturalization Services. Positions included, listen, listen to the Michael's background, as opposed to the folks you see pushed forward by the bought off lamestream fake media who have no experience on the front line. Here's Michael's experience. He was immigration inspector assigned to Kennedy International Airport in New York. Mike was an examiner to the unit which was responsible for adjudicating petitions filed by United States citizens and lawfully admitted permanent resident aliens on behalf of their alien spouses. Michael was a criminal investigator, a special agent for the INS in New York City. Michael was INS representative to the Unified Intelligence Division of the DEA in New York. He was also senior special agent assigned to the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. Bottom line, folks, Michael's career was unusual in that it provided him with a grand tour, if you, if you will, that gave him extensive insight into many aspects of immigration and also provided him with an intimate view of how immigration impacted other law enforcement agencies within the United States and its impact upon every citizen of the United States. I encourage you to go to his website, michaelcutler.net. It's my honor to welcome back my friend and someone who's an incredible patriot, Michael Cutler. Michael, welcome back to Operation Freedom. Thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure and a privilege to join you. I hope you're feeling better, by the way, and I, and I appreciate the invitation to join you once again on your terrific program. Well, the, uh, thanks for asking, Mike. The eye continues to heal, albeit slower than I'd like, but still we're, okay. we're healing. Uh, Good. M- Mike, you wrote a fantastic uh, article. Uh, we all, all your articles are fantastic, but this week uh, really went Flattery after. Flattery will it. get you everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it, it was entitled "Attacks on Law Enforcement Are Attacks on America." The Democrat Party has morphed into the Deathocrat Party. Mike, educate our listeners on this article and the facts you present. Sure. You know, back when I started with the INS as an agent, way back in 1975, we routinely worked with police departments around the country. I mean, and why wouldn't we? You know, this is all Orwellian. I want everyone listening to your program to vow that you will never again use the term political correctness. Wipe it out of your lexicon. This is all Orwellian newspeak. If we think with words, then when you eliminate words, you eliminate the words, the thoughts that the words represent. This is about thought control. And really, I recommend that everyone goes out and gets a copy of 1984 by George Orwell, if you read it, you will understand entirely, instantly, everything that's been happening. So we used to work routinely with the police. And who are we going after? Illegal aliens who are involved in bank robberies, rape, drug trafficking, gun running, you name it. We were picking them up. We worked closely with the cops. If the police raided brothels, we went along with them. Why? Because many times the people who went to the brothels were themselves illegal aliens who had left their wives and girlfriends back in their home country Friday night, Saturday night. They wanted some companionship. The cops would arrest the hookers. They would arrest anybody they could on criminal charges. We would arrest the illegal aliens uh, on administrative charges that they were here illegally. And very often we found out that these people had rap sheets a mile long. Uh, Again, criminals hang out in criminal enterprises. But at the very least, we would deport people that went to the illegal gambling joints, the houses of prostitution, and so forth. It helped to cut down on human trafficking. And when we identified women who were trafficked, who better than an immigration agent? That's the primary responsibility of ICE today and the INS back then. They would work with us. We would let them stay here, either for a temporary period or even permanently, if they could provide us with the information as to how they were brought here, who brought them here, so we could go out and arrest and prosecute the human traffickers. So when we have sanctuary cities, guess who's really being protected? It's the crooked employers, it's the human traffickers, it's criminal aliens, and it's crooked lawyers. One of my very first cases, you mentioned that I was an adjudicator. Well, I uncovered, along with a couple of other adjudications officers, a marriage fraud ring involving Chinese seamen who had jumped ship illegally and were married, quote-unquote, 
to Puerto Rican lesbian hookers in New York City. I kid you not. The attorney was ultimately prosecuted, convicted, disbarred, and sent to jail, and we deported the aliens involved. Today, those people are being shielded by crooked politicians. The dirty secret that people don't want you to know is that the immigration system is not failing. I always like to ask people, do you think it's failing? No, it's not. The immigration system is actually the most efficient system in the federal government as a delivery system. And what does it deliver? An unlimited supply of cheap, exploitable labor, and I assure you there's no compassion there. An unlimited supply of foreign tourists. That's why we have a visa waiver program. shouldn't exist. An unlimited supply of foreign students. We've educated our enemies. China commits espionage so frequently, we've educated almost all of their engineers and programmers who are now attacking us and threatening us that the, the intelligence community refers to um, Chinese espionage as Chinese takeout. And here's the most important thing. We are importing an endless supply of clients for immigration law firms, and the attorneys who do immigration law can be found in both parties. Bob Goodlatte, Republican chairman for the House Judiciary Committee, left Congress, probably back practicing immigration law, where he specialized in H-1B visas. Zoe Lofgren, the current chairperson of the House Immigration Subcommittee, is an attorney, and last time I checked was a member of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. If you want to talk about a vested interest in open borders, comprehensive reform, by the way, was never designed to get illegal aliens out of the shadows. That's just one of their big lies. It was designed to get illegal aliens into the waiting rooms of law firms. And the reason that the law, legal fees would, would have been paid for the uh, aliens, illegal aliens, who pays for your accountant when you file a tax return? Who pays for lawful immigrants when they go to an immigration lawyer? Nobody. But illegal aliens would have gotten free legal help. And people say, well, they're pandering to the illegals. No, they don't. You don't pander to the powerless. This is because immigration lawyers don't like to work for free. How better to guarantee they get paid to have Uncle Sam pick up the tab? So that's how corrupt the system is. Donald Trump comes along and says, wait a minute, this is going to stop. And everybody in both parties has a meltdown. It's Betsy DeVos who's being criticized over COVID. She's the Secretary of Education has turned around and opened an investigation into the billions of dollars being sent from foreign governments that are not our friends to American universities. China, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, probably Russia and Iran. So far, they've uncovered at least $6 billion that had not been reported. God knows how much has been reported. And what are they getting for the money? They're altering the curriculum, and they're picking the faculty. So we're turning our universities into brainwash centers right out of 1984, the Ministry of Truth, okay? Now, in New York, I work closely with the anti-crime unit. The idiot mayor of New York, Mayor de Blasio, I spell his name D-U-H, de Blasio, (laughs) has dismantled anti-crime. Now, what did they do? These were cops that were in plain clothes. They wore sweats, jeans, um, sneakers. And they'd be in unmarked cars. When they saw a crime go down, they would jump out of the cars because they weren't readily visible. And they would arrest the people committing the rape, committing the armed robbery, or firing shots at somebody. I used to ride with them. on. A, I had a desk, in fact, in one of the precincts near where one of the riots was. And we locked up, I can't tell you how many violent, dangerous people. People wanted for murder. People wanted for armed robbery. People who had committed immigration fraud got citizenship by lying and then were robbing banks as they joined the military and were given military training in the Marine Corps. Picture that nightmare. And then they stole machine guns and were carrying out commando-style bank robberies all over New York City in the late 70s. So we worked together. We put together an ad hoc group. It was myself and my partner, somebody from ATF because they were using automatic weapons, military intelligence, naval intelligence back then, and we were going after these people. They were killing people everywhere. So that's the group that has been disbanded. Why? Oh, they're they're, they're making they're they're involved with with shootings. No, they're not. These were cops who were at the heart and soul, as their name implies, of anti-crime. So understand what's really happening. American citizens are dying. Lawful immigrants are dying. Gangbangers, MS-13, and whether and look. By the way, I want to be really clear. Criminals come from every race, every religion, every ethnicity. This isn't like, well, the guy's got brown skin, he must be a bad guy. I've arrested criminal Israelis. I'm Jewish. I don't think I'm anti-Semitic. I've arrested members of the Italian mob, suspected IRA terrorists, 
Jamaican Posse members, you name it, because human nature is human nature. I got an award from the government of Japan helping them with a drug smuggling operation here in the United States that, that went to Japan. So please understand that human nature is human nature. The only distinction that should be made is whether the person's here legally or illegally if they're an alien or a U.S. citizen. So Jimmy Carter started the nonsense. We're going to eliminate the word alien from the vernacular. We're going to call them all immigrants. And the media immediately picked up on it. So if you suggest that we secure the borders, you're immediately branded anti-immigrant. If you say that we should let everybody in and get everybody a green card, oh, that's great. So now you're pro-immigrant. That's a lie. The same laws that tell us who to kick out and who to keep out tell us who to let in. And by the way, if you want to know who we're trying to keep out, it has nothing to do with race, religion, or ethnicity. If it did, I couldn't have enforced those laws for 30 seconds, let alone 30 years. It's aliens with dangerous communicable diseases, mental illness, criminals, spies, terrorists, human rights violators, war criminals, human traffickers, fugitives from justice, irrespective of race, religion, or ethnicity. Why in the world would you want to shield those people from detection unless you want to create chaos in, in our streets. And just to give you an interesting analogy that I thought of in one of my former buddies at the job, not former buddy, he's a, still a friend. I mentored him when he was a new agent. Just He just retired. Here's the way I like to look at it. If you've ever put together a party or a celebration, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, a confirmation, Easter dinner, I don't care, you sit down with a list of all the people you would like to invite, and then you narrow it down based on how much money you have or how big the hall is that will accommodate the number of guests you want to invite. I think we've all experienced that, have we not, Dave? I, we all have experienced that, I believe. So here's my question for you and your audience. When you had to leave some of your friends and cousins and other people out, did you leave them out because you hated them, or did you leave them out because you did not have the resources to invite them? Think about that analogy. That's what immigration is about. In addition mm -hmm. to not wanting to allow criminals and terrorists in, we don't want people coming in to compete with American workers. And we know that we have a finite resource, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's hospitals, whether it's electricity, water, sewerage, food, schools, uh, mass transit. We can only allow in a certain number until we're overloaded. You go to the airport, they don't shove everybody into the airplane. The airplane would weigh too much to take off. So if you dare suggest that we not let in the world immediately, you're branded a hater and a racist. And meanwhile, look what's happened. When they went after immigration, they said, you know, we're on the slippery slope to anarchy. If you can vilify the agents who comprise the second largest force of law enforcement in the Joint Terrorism Task Force, I mean, think about it. Um, every foreign terrorist violates multiple sections of the immigration laws. I know I've investigated and arrested terrorists. Then... Why would you vilify those agents whose key responsibility is to protect us from the bad guys? Governor Cuomo, another imbecile here in New York City, is the guy that referred to ICE agents as thugs, gives them driver's licenses, uh, but won't let immigration or the Border Patrol know anything out of the motor vehicle computer, endangering the safety of the agents and the safety of our country. But he is sharing that information with Canadian border authorities, you'll be happy to know. So what we really have are the Democrats, which used to be the party of the American blue-collar worker, has turned into the party of anarchy. And the reason they're doing it is because if they can melt the system and put everybody on welfare, they be this becomes a one-party country. You see, It's not that they're just simply looking to import new voters, and that's why they're pushing for comprehensive reform. That's why Joe Biden wants comprehensive reform, because the number of aliens who would get green cards, forget that 11 million number, Many universities, including our most liberal, concede that there are at least 25 million illegals here. I would argue it's probably 30 to 40, but let's say 30 million. So if we legalize them all, how many green cards do we issue? Well, you might immediately say, well, this is just about 30 million, which is a, a big number. But it's not. 30 million is the tip of an iceberg because they would immediately have the absolute right to bring in all of their spouses and each and every single one of their minor children. Third world countries typically have seven, eight, nine children. And a man, for example, who has children with women other than his spouse is still considered their father. So if you have a guy that's been out there partying and he has 12 kids, he can bring all 12 of them here overnight. So the 20 million or 30 million quickly goes to over 100 million. Let that number sink in. What would happen if we admitted, let's say, 70 million school-age kids? What happens to our school system? 
The Congressional Budget Office did a study uh, back in 06. They said that it costs 20 to 40 percent more to educate kids who can't speak, read, or write English. Bad as the educational system is now, it would absolutely implode. And when these kids become old enough to work, we would be flooding the labor pool with tens of millions of new workers who have as much right to a job as an American citizen. What would this do to the cost of housing? What would this do to the cost of everything, inflation, because of supply and demand? That's why you have homelessness. We're driving down wages by flooding America with foreign workers, including high-tech workers, which President Trump is addressing, by the way. And meanwhile, we're also allowing people to come in illegally, and they're taking the other jobs. So they all need a place to live. They're driving down wages, displacing Americans and lawful immigrants, and the price of housing has gone through the roof. So as the wages drop and housing goes up, guess what also goes up? Homelessness. What does this do to children who are born in that kind of a chaotic situation? When we talk about compassion, what I really want to know is why compassion doesn't seem to apply to Americans any longer. And when the president says, Americans first, the left goes berserk, and they're trying to take away our history, and there's a reason. And this goes back to a couple of quotes from George Orwell that, I, that I'm compelled to read to you. The first thing he said, think about this. This again, Orwell, please read the book, and please read my article at Front Page Magazine, frontpagemag.com. If you like it, send it to everyone through Facebook, emails. I don't care how you do it. Be part of what I call my bucket brigade of truth. So here's George Orwell. The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. Mm. Now, think about what the New York Times has done. They have a 1619 project. Why 1619? Because August of 1619, the first slaves were brought to the New World to the British colony of Virginia. And the New York Times maintains that because of that, America can never be a good country. Meanwhile, when people go to jail, they look for redemption. And we never hold children responsible for the crimes of the parents. And how many Americans had families who were never even here during that awful era of slavery? Let me be honest. Slavery was an abomination. It wasn't only the blacks, though. The Jews and the Bible, if you read the Bible, slavery was something that humans have done and continue to do each other because we can be very reprehensible people. I prefer the company of my dog to most people, frankly, okay? But the point is, to say that America could never be redeemed because it started with slavery is an outrage. It was America that led the charge for freedom. It was the French that copied the American Revolution, which is why their flag is blue, white, and red instead of red, white, and blue, what they call the tricolor, the tricolor, because their French Revolution was modeled after the American Revolution because we spread freedom around the world. By the way, you should know the Democrats, in the late 20s, had a convention, and I wasn't even aware of it until the New York Times did a Bass Ackwards report. <laughs> they were in a struggle to get rid of the KKK, and they failed. The KKK was part of the Democrat Party, folks. So let's get rid of the history, because God forbid Americans should find out what the Democrats are about. And by the way, I'm registered as a Democrat, because they used to be the party of blue-collar America. But there's, a, there's two other points I want to make. George Orwell again, in a time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. Think about mm -hmm. fake media. And finally, who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. And that's why they want to rewrite history. Because if they can rewrite history, they can twist it any way they want. They can say the Holocaust never happened. They can say all kinds of things, and they can twist things to their liking as a way of indoctrinating the people. And that's what they're doing. So please understand the importance of the study of history and the importance of getting accurate news. Think about this. When there's a revolution, what's the first thing that the rebels always sees? Radio and television stations and newspapers. Why? To control the flow of information. And I said a while back when they were trying to delegitimize the presidency of President Trump, their goal was revolution. I don't think I was off the mark. Because when you study political science, you learn that when citizens no longer have a sense of political legitimacy about their own government, the inevitable result is revolution. Are, are we there yet, Dave? We are, uh, we are right there, Mike. You know, it, it's so important that when you speak to your neighbors, and this is something I want to address in the last couple of seconds that I have, please understand, don't get angry with your neighbors. It's frustrating, I know. But these are people you may have known for decades, and you always thought they were great people. That's why you became friends with them. They have been swindled. They've been conned. 
no differently from those people who were conned out of their life savings by Madoff. They've been listening to the steady diet of lies and BS from the mainstream media. They've come to believe the lies are true. You need to sit down with them, and they're going to be very defensive because they're invested in their belief system. So what you need to do is to have a conversation and say, let's keep the personalities out of it. Does it make sense that we should give 100 million aliens the ability to work in America, go to our schools when we don't have enough jobs? Does it make sense that we protect criminal aliens from detection? Does it make sense? And here's the question, and you should always end with a question. And here's a great question to ask your friends. Would you get on an airplane if you saw people sneaking past the TSA? I can't imagine anybody would. Then ask them why in the world we're being forced to live with millions of foreign nationals whose identities and backgrounds are unknown and unknowable. Why are we living among millions of those people who snuck past the very similar and just as important vetting process that we conducted ports of entry? When you look at that analogy, it becomes crystal clear that the people that want open borders, the people that want everything that opposes Donald Trump, don't care about national security, don't care about public safety, certainly don't care about the future of our fellow citizens. If this is supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, then why aren't they listening to the American people, except for the fact that they've been bought off by the lobbyists, or they have an agenda of a one-party government putting the Democrats in charge, so that we will never again know freedom. I didn't always agree with Ronald Reagan, but boy, was he right when he said that freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. Michael, folks need to follow you on a daily basis. How do folks do that and educate them on your podcast as well? Okay, sure. Thank you, Dave. You know, every Friday night from 7 until 8 o'clock New York time, I do the Michael Cutler Hour on Blog Talk Radio. If you just put in Blog Talk Radio, the Michael Cutler Hour, you can get my podcast. You can click on it. They're all there. They're free. Enjoy yourself. I hope that if you like them, you spread them around. I do a lot of writing for Front Page Magazine, frontpagemag.com, sponsored by the David Horowitz Freedom Center. I also do podcasts for Dennis Michael Lynch, dmlnews.com. 